I can talk about lymph nodes for literally hours. <laughs> they are so freaking cool. They're all over your body. And then they get involved with the spleen and then the tonsils all up in there too. Let's just start with the basics. Here's your lymphatic system. All these green lines, all these green dots, the dots are your lymph nodes, the lines are the lymph vessels. The places where we tend to find swollen lymph nodes are where they're very close to the skin, like the neck, the underarms, and the groin. And a lot of times people can feel them right here in the crux of the arm, otherwise known as the antecubital fossa. So your lymphatic system actually has directionality. And for the most part, the body wants to move all this fluid to the heart so that it can go back into your circulation and be processed by the immune system. One of the most interesting things about your lymphatic system is that it doesn't have anything propelling it other than you moving your body. So your muscles, when you move your body, are what propel this fluid to where it needs to be. It doesn't have a heartbeat like our vascular system does. It is totally reliant on gravity and your movement. The lymph vessels have valves, and so when fluid gets pushed through, the valves open and then they shut, and that maintains the directionality. People who don't have functioning valves have something called lymphedema. If someone comes to see me for a swollen lymph node, then we have to assess where the location of the lymph node is. Is it in one spot or is it in multiple? If it's in one spot, then you can pretty reliably predict where the infectious process is or where the issue is that's causing the reactive lymph nodes. Typically, if you have swollen lymph nodes around the ear and just under the angle of the mandible, there's an issue with the scalp. If you have lymph nodes that are swollen underneath the chin and along the neck, then usually there's an, either an upper respiratory infection or a dental infection. The axillary lymph nodes are the ones in your underarm. They accept drainage from the arm and from the chest. And remember that the whole point is to get all this lymphatic fluid to the heart so that it can circulate into your immune system to be processed. There are lymph nodes in the pelvis and the ones closest to the surface are the inguinal lymph nodes. And these drain from the external genitalia and the leg. Infections in either of these places will typically cause the inguinal lymph nodes to swell. Now, what if you have multiple lymph nodes swollen in multiple parts of the body? Then you can't really localize it. You have to start to look for systemic issues like viral illness, immunodeficiencies, and yes, sometimes lymphoma, leukemia, and other malignancies. So if a patient comes to me with a localized lymph node, then I assess the symptoms, try to see where the reactivity is coming from. Is it a, an infection somewhere? If I can't find a cause, then I typically get an ultrasound of the area to characterize the mass. Typically, the ultrasound can tell me if it's a reactive lymph node, is it a mass or is it a cyst? And then at that point, that will guide my direction of where to biopsy or what to treat or if I need to investigate further. If someone comes to me with swollen lymph nodes all over the body, then I'm going to be doing more blood work to look for an infectious or a malignant cause.